Wall Street Journal editorial board has a new piece this morning entitled, Meanwhile, Watch China in the Pacific, in which it warns that, quote, with the world focused on Ukraine, bad actors in Asia are on the march. The editorial board writes in part, China keeps expanding its military reach in the Pacific. Beijing has fully militarized at least three islands it built in the South China Sea. China may also be negotiating a security deal with the Solomon Islands, according to documents that appear to have been leaked from the island government. The deal could eventually lead to Chinese forces deployed in the South Pacific nation a few hours of flight time from Australia. A Chinese military base with offensive capabilities could follow. Meanwhile, the Chinese foreign minister dropped by Kabul on Thursday to meet with Taliban officials. China has no qualms about dealing with unsavory regimes and will look to cut favorable deals on mining or infrastructure. This is the way the world usually works. Trouble in one theater provides incentive for other rogues to create trouble, while the U.S. and other democracies are preoccupied. And boy, are they ever right now. Joining us now, former Prime Minister of Australia, Kevin Rudd. He's the author of the new book, The Avoidable War, The Dangers of a Catastrophic Conflict Between the U.S. and Xi Jinping's China. Also with us, professor of history at Tulane University, Walter Isaacson. Ambassador Rudd, I'd like to start with you. Is China taking advantage of the situation? I think the Chinese are deeply concerned with what's going on in Ukraine because they've got right out ahead of their own skis here and providing so much, as it were, political and diplomatic cover and support for Putin's invasion. And they are deeply worried about collateral damage for themselves in the eyes of the Europeans. Uh, so therefore, they'll be watching developments day by day uh, on the ground in Ukraine to work out what to do next. At the same time, Chinese statecraft is active in the rest of the world. And your report on the Solomon Islands just now is accurate. It's not far mm. from my own country. And I think you'll see continued Chinese activism in the Indo-Pacific. <coughs> uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, you've had a much closer look uh, most uh, geopolitically at, at China's expansionism uh, under President Xi. What warning do you deliver to uh, the United States and the West in your book? The bottom line is uh, Xi Jinping's worldview has changed China. China was um, becoming more powerful under his predecessors, somewhat more assertive, but the takeoff point starting with Xi Jinping's administration in 2012 2013 has been sharp and acute. And every region of the world is now feeling the impact of Chinese economic power, certainly its foreign policy influence, and to some extent in certain parts of the world its military presence as well. Therefore, for the United States, which is a leader of the free world, the importance of having not just a coherent, bipartisan, long-term American strategy for dealing with China uh, and China's rise also needs to do so in partnership with its democratic allies in Asia and in, and in Europe. And in part, the book deals with that, as well as how to navigate this really dangerous decade ahead which lies with China, particularly on Taiwan. Mr. Mr. Prime Minister, um, I agree with you, uh, needing a bipartisan approach, and I, I hate to ask you a question that, that some may consider to be partisan, but uh, there are many Americans that were horrified by Donald Trump's uh, treatment of our Australian allies. Uh, you all have been our, our most loyal and faithful friends, and hopefully we have been loyal and faithful to, to you through over the past 100 years. Uh, I am curious, um, has Australia moved past that chapter? Do you feel like the United States is a better friend today than it was a few years ago? Yeah, the view, I think, of both Asian and uh, European allies, and I speak to them all in my current think tank capacity here in the United States, um, is that when the Biden administration says America is back, actually that is the case. The alliance bridges have been rebuilt to Brussels. We've been watching today uh, the, the reception which President Biden has been receiving 
uh, in his uh, visit to uh, NATO and the European, European Union and others. The same in Australia, the same in Japan, the same in the Republic of Korea. So the alliance rebuilding has happened. What's now needed is this continued, as it were, development of a pan-aligned strategy to deal with China's rise. And Russia has been a partner of China in that. So, Mr. Prime Minister, I want to get you on two matters. First, uh, you were part of the formulation of the G20. We heard from President Biden yesterday call for uh, Russia to be removed from that organization, but he acknowledged that may be tough because their countries can have veto power. China likely to do so. I want to get your perspective on that. But also, this tie between Moscow and Beijing, and we know that China is watching nervously the development of the war in Ukraine. Is there a scenario that you could see where China would actively help Putin with armaments, equipment, supplies? Or at what moment will Xi Jinping honor President Biden's call and cut Putin loose? Well, the first one on the G20, it's really tough for the G20 members. Why? It's an institution of global financial and economic governance. It's technically not a political or geopolitical entity. But the challenge which President Biden, the U.S. administration and its democratic allies face is how do you treat Russia as a normal state right now, given its brutal invasion of another state next door to it and the war crimes we see unfolding on our television screens each day? So, whereas as a co-founder of the G20 myself, back in 2009 with President Obama, uh, we still have continuing uh, global financial challenges. They will continue through this year and next. We don't want to trash the institution. It took a long time and a lot of diplomatic effort to create it. But on balance, I support President Biden's view. I do not see how we can have a normal conversation among states with one which has been so brutally violent in the usurpation of international law in this invasion of Ukraine. So I think um, that is uh, a huge factor for the future. Will China back away uh, from Russia or could it go forward and provide uh, Vladimir Putin with material financial and military assistance? The Chinese fear the impact of U.S. dollar-denominated sanctions against itself mm -hmm. were it so to act on either score. On balance, what's interesting to observe is, here we are four weeks into this war, China so far, based on my information, hasn't violated the U.S. financial sanctions yet against Moscow. And therefore, it would take a very brave move indeed to cross that threshold. Even the military threshold, despite Russians' apparent request of Xi Jinping to help because Russian equipment is running out. Good morning, Mr. Prime Minister. As you've been saying this morning, uh, President Xi is watching with some interest how the world has responded to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Because, you write in the book, it is my judgment that Xi Jinping is likely to seek to use military means to recover Taiwan if, in fact, political means fail. You say he views himself much like Vladimir Putin as a man of history and that part of his legacy would be to bring Taiwan to heel. Do you believe it is inevitable that China will use military power to take Taiwan. Well, I'm always worried when any political leader thinks of themselves as, quote, a man of history. That usually spells trouble from my perspective. Mm. Uh, I'm more in the business of day-to-day -day global political management. That's the way in which we preserve the planet. But you know something? Uh, Xi, under Xi Jinping, it's clear when you look at the texts that they put out domestically for their own political class to consume, that under Xi Jinping's leadership, they are moving towards a timetable to recover Taiwan latest by 2049, conceivably by 2035, and militarily probably see themselves in a position to do so by the end of this decade or early the next. Therefore, the Chinese will be watching with razor-sharp lens what happens on the ground in Ukraine, because after all, that's a land-based operation. It should have been, in the Chinese military's view, relatively straightforward for Putin. Taking Taiwan is a massive amphibious operation, which would probably make the D-Day landings look like a cakewalk. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, former Prime Minister of Australia, Kevin Rood, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we're honored. We greatly appreciate it. The new book is The Avoidable War, The Dangers of a Catastrophic Conflict between the U.S. and Xi Jinping's China, a must-read. Uh
Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.